Hey everybody, welcome back live at Drew's House, another edition. Hope everybody is doing well. We're off and running. I'm going to welcome in my first guest of the day. Oh, here he is he's coming in right now. We're doing an at-home show today, as you can see. And uh, my first guest today is going to be the one and only Dan Thornton, who hey, helps hey. Right on the show. Hey, Dan, how are you? I'm here. We're off and rolling. Perfect. How are you doing? Can you hear me okay? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Good to see you, my man. I hope, I hope everything is doing well. It's been a little while. I know, right? School's almost over. What the heck? We're, we're done soon. Next week. Yeah, seniors are already gone. Good to get rid of them, right? No, I'm just seniors kidding. Seniors are gone. Yep. I and mean, we're really done. So next week, um, our last day of school is on Tuesday. And we have to be out of the building on Wednesday because that's it. The building's gone. Wow, that's right. All right, we're going to talk about that. We'll give a proper introduction here. Dan Thornton, assistant principal, athletic director, pretty much does it all over there at Kentucky. He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a multitasker. Yeah. Uh, Let's talk a little bit about the year that was. First of all, what jumps off the page for you this, this last school year? Uh, well, it's amazing that we look back and think that uh, at one point we were in masks. Yeah, right. You know, it's strange to think that we were patrolling indoor bleachers and stadiums and they say, oh, you got to put your mask on or can we have fans at the hockey games? And uh, it just feels really good this spring because everything just seems so normal. I know. You know. Just out and about, and everyone's just competing, and it seems like it's uh, like the good old days. <laughs> I remember I was talking to Kyle Hodson. I know a friend of yours over at Newburyport, the athletic director, and he was telling me it's almost like uh, some of those kids, he ha literally hadn't even like seen their faces. Oh, absolutely. It's crazy. Yeah. No, it's totally crazy. Yeah, and you, you, you definitely get a feel for it with, um, you know, you had a good idea who most of the students were, but for me, it was a lot of the freshmen. Because they were new to the building, always in masks, and then you finally get to take them off, and you're like, "Oh, that's who that is." All right, now I get it. Yeah, huh. they go to Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. And also, the big news: you guys uh, have officially—I mean, we've talked about this in the past. You got rid of the Sachem's name; we knew that was gone, but now you've had the renaming. Correct? That's correct. Yeah, we are the Panthers. Wow. Do you have to say it that way with with gusto? Um, yeah, yeah, I guess. I mean, we'll have to figure that all out, but it's, it's all really new to us. Yeah. We are the Panthers. Yeah, it was down. It, we, we got, uh, I was actually on the committee and, um, we had it down between the, the river Hawks and the Panthers and, uh, went out to a student vote throughout the entire district. They voted, I believe from, uh, maybe fourth or fifth grade up through the high school. And the uh, results came in, and they chose the Panthers. Yeah. The Kentucky Panthers. I don't know if you wow. Can so that's the logo. That's the new logo. Very good. Yeah. Very exciting. Uh, what is what, what has that process been like? I know it's not the easiest thing to go through, but uh, a lot of mixed feelings. I know it's always issues, both sides have a lot of feelings on these issues. Uh, has, has the change been okay within the students, though? That's kind of who I wonder about. Yeah, and I think that's why we left it up to the students. Um, it wasn't put out to the district in terms of the, um, you know, the entire district. It was more put like the students, uh, it was going to be their mascot. And, you know, we just kind of wanted to leave it in their hands. And there was, a, there was a lot of talk about, you know, should it be something that's more indigenous to the area? Should it be, you know, like <laughs> we threw out a lot of different things. One of the names that came up, which was pretty interesting, was the sturgeon which is a fish that is, uh, you know, known to the areas around the Rocks Village Bridge and the Merrimack River. Uh, but I guess Pentucket sturgeon didn't really flow off the, uh, <laughs> the tongue as, as easily. So Panthers it is, and uh, the, the students have spoken, and that's who we are. We're going to be uh, the Panthers. Do uh, this time of year, do you get excited as a teacher about uh, summer, or do you, I don't know, What's your vibe? I mean, I remember as a kid, I used to love this time of year. Do teachers? Oh, I think, uh, yeah, I think everyone gets to the point, especially around this year, this time of year, where you just, you start to run out of gas a little bit. Um, you know, and even for us, it's just, it's really, uh, it's breakneck speed, I think, going to the end, because you have, you know, especially with the seniors, you have awards nights, and you have your National Honor Society, you have banquets, you have the prom, you have graduation. You have playoff games. Um, you know, as administrators, we're writing evaluations. We're trying to wrap up the school year with the teachers. Uh, and then you throw all that in with, oh, by the way, you have to get everything out of here by June 15th because we're new, moving into a new building. 
So it's it's been a little crazy, but it is crazy. It's all good. What's the um, when you look back on this kind of time period? Are you going to kind of remember these COVID classes a little bit? Like I bet you'll never forget them as teachers, just because uh, you guys all kind of went through. We all went through as a society, but you guys all kind of went through something together, right? Oh, absolutely. And it's just been, I mean, who was prepared for it? Nobody. It was, you know, what are we doing? What's it going to look like? Um, you know, remote learning. And it was, for us, it was hybrid every other day. So there was students coming in on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and the other crew was coming in on Wednesdays and Fridays. Uh, just a whole, I mean, nothing that we're used to. Absolutely nothing. And even as an administrator, you know, on the silly things, what you think about where, you know, something would happen and there's a little a few shenanigans going on here at the school and someone uh, maybe uh, makes a bad decision and they're going to get a one day suspension. But when you're in hybrid, if it's a Tuesday, Thursday student and you say, I'm going to give you a one day suspension, it could turn into a week because if if you suspend them on a Tuesday, then you say, well, now you're out on Thursday, so you won't be back till next Tuesday. Just crazy stuff like that, which yeah. you never think about it because. You know, you want to be swift and get it over with, but it ends up turning into this long term, you know, out of school. The, uh, that is something you probably don't prepare for as an administrator. Let's learn how to punish kids with uh, in a hybrid model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, is there stuff? I mean, I think everybody at every level probably I think you just use the word some of the silly stuff. But I mean, there is I mean, there's politicians who uh, say consistently, like if we pitched a perfect game in the pandemic, uh, that would be something extraordinarily. Just nobody did it. There's probably stuff that you guys are looking back on, like that uh, That was probably a little bit silly, but maybe you'll learn from it. Is, is there lessons that you're actually going to take out of it? Yeah, I, I think everyone can learn from it. Also, I, I think one of the biggest things we learned, too, is how much we really appreciate being in school. Uh, and that goes with students and staff, because when that was taken away, I think maybe for the first couple of weeks, people were like, oh, this is kind of nice. We're you know, we're not in school or it's a little bit more laid back and we're going to do some of this remote learning and what's this going to look like. Uh, and then once it got into weeks and months and months and months, you know, I think everyone was just like, this is awful. Like, we've got to get back in school. Yeah, I know. I, I've, I've never seen kids so happy to be back at school. It really is true, isn't it? So true. Yeah, it really is. And just seeing like even trying to get out of it, you know, the some of the students who had just been locked up in their houses basically for you know a year or two mm. um to get back it's just it's it's a it's a big thing and it doesn't come back that quick easy uh, some some there's some students uh and faculty really who struggle with it just in the fact of you know it it, it did make a uh you know it, it did leave a dent on us yeah and i mean it's still it's still a thing it is kind of weird to still be in a pandemic while i know you guys have very much pulled out of it it is still yeah. a thing around us right no, I know. It's just strange now when someone has COVID and they're like, oh, I have COVID. And you're like, oh, I hope you're feeling better. <laughs> you're right. Exactly. See a couple of days. Was that tough? Because obviously kids were so, uh, you know, the kids weren't the ones by large part getting really sick from this and dying. Right. Uh, was that kind of hard to explain to kids this thing that you can't really see within you and your peers? That Was that a hard thing to kind of yeah, absolutely. I think we all struggled wrapping our heads around it because, I mean, there was even instances where, you know, I think we had um, the year that we did the spring football and we had, you know, a student athlete who tested positive and then we ended up shutting the entire football team down for two weeks. You know, and you look back on it and think like, did we really need to do that? Shut it down for two weeks, every single person on the team, or should we have just kept it as like a student athlete who, who had it at that point? Uh, you know, and I know everything was, uh, the, you know, error on the side of caution with all of that, which I totally get it. But, um, you know, you do look back. And I think those are things we learned as well because, you know, everybody was outside. They were pretty much distanced. And, you know, I, nobody, I, there was nobody else on the team that ended up getting sick. Right. Lessons learned for the next pandemic, which no, no, please. Yeah, right. Not for us. <laughs> the uh, dogs get excited here in warm weather. You'll hear more dogs, I think. Yeah. Uh, this we is we're trying to get these shows completely out of the, uh, the kitchen. Back on the studio. We'll have you in the studio soon, by the way. We, have, we haven't seen you in there in a long time. Excellent. Um, was it, give me some name dropping. Who made headlines on the sports fields or in the classroom? Who's the uh, who are the star people over there in Kentucky right now? Gosh, we've had uh, a really good run this spring with Alex Bishop and uh, Emily Rubio um, taking home pentathlon championships in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, they just had a recent one as well where they finished one two. So uh, they've had 
tremendous runs um, on, on that side of things. And, uh, you know, the other teams are doing well. We had a baseball win yesterday in extra innings. The lacrosse teams are, are gearing up. They have games coming up on Wednesday and Thursday this week. Uh, tennis team was just bowed out, uh, one of our tennis teams. But um, it's been a really good spring. Yeah. Just nice to, yeah. I mean, for you guys, it's probably every kid I talk to has just said some of those rules you forget that were changed during the pandemic. Like you had to, whether you had to wear masks or like literally the rules of the games were changed a little bit too, which was just bizarre. Oh, absolutely. For some of these yeah. sports, uh, just, I mean, every kid is just happy to be back to normal, it seems. Yep. Um, what are the uh, what are summer, pro so what happens with the school? You guys are getting a brand new school. Yeah, the new school is, uh, is you know, we're, Basically running into the completion stage right now. Uh, I got some pictures yesterday. I'm going to go in a little bit later today. We're so you're in the process in the, of uh, painting the gym floor. You're in the so, assistant principal's office right now at Pentucket High, and it's going to be demolished. Uh, yes, this office that I'm in, well, today is Tuesday. So a week from today, I have to be out of this office. And wow. they'll put a, basically a fence around the current high school. And for the rest of the year, they'll just start abating the building, and it'll be torn down along with the middle school throughout the entire summer. And then come late August, we'll be moving into the new building. Okay, and with that comes all the upgrades of a new school, correct? Yeah, everything is gonna be, uh, you know, while well, the brand new building will be in for the academic piece uh, starting next fall. So everybody will be in there playing volleyball, we'll have, um, you know, any of the activities that take place in the high school will be throughout that year. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the campus at all, but the middle school, which is on, on our campus next to the high school, that's also being torn down. And that will be the new stadium for us. Okay. So that will be take, that'll all happen this summer. The, high, the existing high school and the middle school will both be torn down. And the existing high school will be a parking lot feeding into the new high school. It's actually a middle high school. And the middle school will be demolished and turned into a stadium. Wow. Yeah, and exactly. then out front where we have temporary parking, that'll be turned into an, an additional baseball stadium and uh, playing fields for soccer, lacrosse, field hockey, whatnot. So it's a massive project. Pretty big, yeah. What's, uh, is there excitement? I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys probably get to the point where a lot of your things are outdated, but your fields are outdated. I think some of your fields don't have lights, so this is probably a big deal for a lot of your kids. Yeah, this will be a very big change uh, for someone who went to Pentucket and maybe went off to college or went off and had a job somewhere else to come back a few years later and, and see what the existing school is and what it will be. It's going to be a, kind of a mini college campus, if you will, because, I mean, we have had grass fields everywhere for since as long as I've been here with no lights. And so a year from now, we're going to have, outside speaking, new state, two new stadiums all turf fields mm. and all with lights. It, yeah, everybody has the turf fields now. It's amazing how much of the norm that has become. It was mostly grass when I was in high school, but it seems like everybody has turf now except for, well, you guys pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so we'll see. I mean, it'll be exciting. Um, it's, it's also a good thing, I think, in terms of scheduling because here I am today and I'm looking at Thursday. We have some home lacrosse games and I'm looking at it saying, I don't think we're going to be able to play because it's supposed to pour Thursday. Whereas, you know, you know, you get jealous in the sense of I can talk to my, my friends over at Triton and Newburyport and Georgetown and they're like, Oh no, we're playing. Yeah, we're good. We have turf. <laughs> right, right, right. What there, you you're such a veteran there though. You must, there must be some um, kind of bittersweet memories though. You must be, there must be a little part of you that is sad to see that field go or sad to see that office that you're in go. Yeah, I mean, not so much with the office. It's I'm not, you know, I'm not too much of a nostalgia guy. Where like that's fine. You know, I like to see a new building. But in terms of the fields and the, our gym too, I like I love the little gym we have here. You know, everyone, people or schools that'll come in that aren't used to this place just say it reminds them of the Hoosiers. Right. Because it's just a small little bandbox of a gym where the fans are right on top of you. And uh, personally, I always enjoyed playing the football games and the soccer games on our, our field out back because we had a hard time growing grass with the amount of teams that we played there. And um, our guys and girls just grew to love playing in the mud. Yeah. Because it just was a sloppy, dirty <laughs> field. And we really felt it was a home field advantage for us because so many of the other teams, like you said, are used to playing on turf and they would come in with their you know cleats all nice and clean 
and you know they'd step off the bus and walk across the field and they'd start looking down at their shoes saying like we have to play on this and our our players would be looking over saying game's over we already won <laughs> yeah that is hilarious well there you go so there's the bittersweet memories i, I you're a little sentimental about that stuff yeah a little bit <laughs> very good well i wish you a good summer dan thornton i hope uh, everything's well on your side again we'll get you in studio pretty soon here uh almost back in full time so uh there you go you're and you're probably already scheduling for next year right absolutely oh yeah gosh we're, we're already looking into winter really oh wow oh, yeah. yeah fall's done i always forget how crazy that is you guys gotta be 10 steps ahead yeah fall's pretty much put to bed uh winter schedules are now working on those so we'll get those schedules going and hopefully less yeah. bus issues next year right staff shortages weren't good oh my goodness yeah buses are tough yeah yep well, we'll get that all ironed out next year. Completely back to normal. All right. The, I appreciate it. Um, I see the ladder. That's kind of funny. That's the first time this has happened. So I have a, a piping issue in my ceiling oh. from the lovely, uh, the lovely, uh, I've been doing the show here from this kitchen for much of the pandemic. And uh, as many of you know, and, uh, and if you're watching right now, you know, and uh, yeah, we had a little, little water issue. So I see the ladder has come in. Looks like uh, we're about to get some work done. Let's go. You want to come help? Yeah, I can, I can, uh, well, I mean, listen. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, I'm ready. Awesome. Yeah, I'm Let's on it. Me. I'll see you in about a half hour. It's about the Got drive. It. Okay. Got it. Cool. That's the first, that's the first show I've ever ended with about to get to work on the house, but that's what we're going to do. We're going to get to it. Dan Thornton, always, always a pleasure to talk to you. Thanks for catching us up on, uh, the school year that was, uh, have a good summer. We'll get you in the studio this summer and we'll do some in-person talking and all that stuff. Always a pleasure to see you, my man. Same here. My pleasure. All right, Dan Thornton, live at Drew's House Shop Afternoon Drive, another edition. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you soon.